Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by my good buddy Tap. Tom Peterson. And we are here to talk with you about Intel Arc. Yes. Right, continue to bring you the updates, talk about what, what changes we're making, all the new programs that are coming out and, and uh, everything like that. And you can see from the slide behind You've us. We've got a topic today. Right, we're talking about balanced builds. And this is really cool for me because we finally get to bring in the broader, greater Intel machine yep. into our storytelling. Yeah, the balanced build, what it's all about is we're, we're using the Intel uh, engineering resources to actually solve a, a real question that's been out there forever. Like, hey, I've got a GPU. What's the actual right CPU to pair with that? Yep. Right. So we did a bunch of testing. We're going to share all those results. We're going to share all the data. And uh, we're going to make people understand what a balanced build is all about. Great. Okay, but before we do that, let's do a quick recap. Let's do it. Quick recap. Here we go. So in Q1, we introduced a new driver. It's, it was called our DX9 improvement driver. We improved performance on DX9 by 43%. And at the same time, a brand new price for A750, $249. It's an absolute bargain. And the response was great, right? H huge changes, huge performance uplifts, like multiple generational uplifts and kind of like a single driver type. When we launched, we said, hey, we're going to keep working on this driver. We're gonna, there's a potential left in this GPU. Yeah. And the engineering team really nailed it in the February release, dramatically improved performance. Yep. Now, since then, we our engineers have been very busy. We've had 21 new drivers since launch. We've had 42 new game on uh, day zero supports, which means that we've done all the QA, all the all the verification, all the improvements for brand new titles. 42 new titles supported on the day of launch. We've had up to 50 or, or more than 50 XCSS titles enabled, and finally, just continual driver improvements. Yeah, this is really about the the, the as we've said since kind of I don't know last. October sometime in 2022, the long tail of improvements, the long Absolutely. tail. A labor of love forever. You, know, you always call it labor of love, polishing <laughs> yeah, exactly, for, for exactly. years to come, right? And this is part of that commitment, right? And it's still still being executed. Obviously. Absolutely. And our, our our support for day zero titles, 42 new titles, that's a, a massive investment for us, yeah. but, it's, but it's worth it, right? We're going to keep our commitment to make ARC better over time. Great progress, great yep. progress. Yep. All right, so let's look at uh, XCSS in detail. So first of all, this is a little wheel of all of the different uh, XCSS titles we've improved. And you can see they're big titles, Modern Warfare in here, a bunch of others. It's, it's going great. It's, it's fantastic to see the cadence of game releases, like continuing, it's not slowing down, no. you know, since we launched. No. And we've got a lot more games on the, on the roadmap for 2023 that we can't talk about yet, but yep. it's going to be, it's going to be, it's great. Yeah, and XCX, I mean, if, as you know, XCSS improves performance by like 30, 40%. So when you get an XCSS title, you turn it on, it looks great, and it has massive performance boosts. All right, so let's talk about why we're here. All right, back. Last time we showed these massive m amounts of data, one of the feedbacks I got was, hey, Tap, why are you always using Core i9 for your data set, mm -hmm. right? And the reason we do that is because we're trying to isolate the GPU from everything else in the system. You want to know how does the GPU performance scale independent of everything else. Right. So you get the fastest hard drives, you get the biggest memory configurations, yeah. you get the fastest yeah. CPUs, and you say, this is the best case for this GPU. But, uh, but the truth is, that's not what people build. Right, so uh, you know we've got a we've got a gap we need to close. Yeah, right. And as you know, when you look at the what the reviewers tend to do, and I was in that field for a very long time. Yep. I'll say, right, you 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 do that. You you want the highest performing platform to isolate that individual component, whether it be you're testing a GPU or an SSD or right. a motherboard or whatever you it's going to be. Everything else out of the way, right? Yeah, yeah, and and that is the same kind of mindset that you have at an engineering level. You mm -hmm. want to be able to show um, uh, and unlock and remove any bottlenecks from the component. GPU. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. And you can see here's a collection of reviewers and their system configurations. And you can see exclusively they're all using very, very high end yeah. hardware yeah. in their test beds. Now, that's lots of different reasons, but it's primarily that they want to be able to isolate the other components yes. that they're testing. Yes. Okay. But the truth is, this is not what people do. Like regular humans mostly don't use the most expensive stuff. They're, they're all looking for that, that like balance. Yeah. What's the, what's the bang for buck for the dollar that I spend on any particular thing? And how should I make this whole system make sense? And it's, it's always interesting. We, we've seen it forever in the communities and, and Reddits and forums and uh, discords, right? All of that is, there's tons of discussion about what's the right pairing with blank. Yeah, and it's like this holy grail. It's, it's, it's almost like <laughs> tribal knowledge that's communicated. Yeah. You know, I found that this game with this CPU does this. Well, I, I tell you what, we are a bigger 
corporation. We have gigantic laboratories. <laughs> so I really want to answer this question, right? And that's what we think we're going to. Okay. That's what the ARC uh, balance builds are all about. We've applied our engineering resources, we've looked at all the data, and we discovered that for an ARC A750 or an ARC A770, a Core i5 is about the right processor, or a Core i7 is, yep. is really where you want to balance. Yeah, and, and you can see on the, on the slide here, right, 12th and 13th gen, i5 and i7, we'll show you the data that proves this out, right, is the, is the balance point yeah. for the A750 and A7. Absolutely, and we've got some pricing here. Yeah, the, the, we'll see this across um, component retailers as well as system integrators, uh -huh. this idea of promoting and, and advocating for balanced builds. Yeah, and we're, we're using the Intel engine to figure out the right combos. Yes, so you'll see you know, CPU and GPU bundles starting at you know, $423 mm -hmm. um, for a, a Core i5 and an A750 GPU. Nice. You'll see full systems based on those same types of configurations starting at $899. Wow. Right? And it's obviously going to vary a bunch depending on you know coolers and storage and memory capacity and other components that LEDs. dive into it. Yeah, yeah lots of LEDs. Yeah. Uh, but the important part is that you know this is your this is the, the the most critical components of that build that define you know are you getting a good value for your dollar bang for yeah. your buck. I'm pretty excited. It's going to make it easier for our our end gamers to find yeah. the right systems. Right? Yep. Okay, so let's get a little sciency. This curve represents the return, effectively, that you get when you're building a platform for an A750. So if you use a i3, i5, i7, or i9, you're going to improve performance at some rate. But you can obviously see that the rate uh, tails off, right? The, 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 core, the A750 or A770 is less sensitive to CPUs past some point. Right. And the point that that tails off is between an i5 and an i7, yep. right? So based on all of our testing, we can say the optimal range is between an i5 and an i7 for an A750. And I know you've used this term with me. This is the, the knee of the curve. The knee of the curve. Right, where, where it starts to level off. Exactly. And this is, we can, we can kind of basically create a range around that. And so this is roughly the right balance point for that particular That's product. exactly right. And it's taking into account performance and cost and saying mm -hmm. this, is, this is the optimal place to build a system. Yep. Now, what's interesting is during our testing, we discovered it's not the same for every GPU. Right. GPUs come in different classes. As a matter of fact, an A380 has a different performance profile. It's a little smaller GPU, so it actually becomes CPU limited earlier. Right. right now, if you look at the optimal place for an A380, it's going to be more like a Core i3. Yep. Right. It's really interesting. So you can actually balance your CPU spend to match your GPU, and you get overall the right performance price balance. Makes sense. Okay. Makes sense. Now it's also on the other side. There are some GPUs in the world that have higher performance that tend to become CPU limited quicker, and in those cases, you'll see more scaling all the way up through our Core i9 product family. And there's an optimal area for those uh, right. workloads and CPUs, GPUs as well. And that's where you start to see the Core i7, higher end, Core i9 mm -hmm. products that Intel offers really stretch its legs, really power the most powerful gaming machines out there. If you're in a different budget, you just have a different class Absolutely. Of, of GPU as your, as your use model, right? But it's also worth noting, like, this is applicable to um, non-gaming workloads in the same way. If you're an Adobe user, you're going to be very CPU limited in your in your cases, and in those places, you would want a more uh, right. powerful CPU. Right. But here, we're talking specifically about a machine for gaming. These are those for gaming using models. an A750. Yeah. If you're in that class of GPU, then the right CPU is somewhere between an i5 and an i7. Yep. All right. So what are we talking about here on this? So the important part is we've already talked about. There's going to be tons of partners that are helping us tell the story of balanced builds, and that's really to me the most important part is that we have retailers, um, system integrators, partners all over the world that are going to help us talk about balanced builds and make sure that we're matching the right components across CPU and GPU. So you can see a bunch of logos here um, that are across the U.S. We've got other ac others across the world. Yep, we've got some that, systems that here, right? Companies. Yeah, we've got systems in studio. We've always got to have a physical thing. Yeah. So these are this collection of systems from some of our great partners that are building balanced builds. I like it. With us, right? We've got Main Gear uh, all the way on the left. It's uh, you know, one of our newest system integrator partners. Yeah. It's great to have them. We've got Thermal Take. We've got iBuy Power. This one's available at Best Buy. Okay. Uh, a great system. We've got the Micro Center build here next. It's actually using an A770 in it. It's oh, a nice. great deal. Sweet. Yeah, and then we've got uh, our ABS system on the far right as well. Nice. Just a handful of examples yeah. of systems that you can go buy today that 
have a balance build configuration. It's in. pretty exciting. I mean, having uh, our buddies that are system integrators we've known from forever, you and I, yeah, and, yeah. and they're you know now we're it's real. It's happening. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I'm pretty excited. It's great. So it's it's a testament to the fact that data does tell a story. Yeah. And, and there's a right right balance and a build for uh, a 750. Exactly. But you know that's all just words. <laughs> and you know, I'm I'm not a word guy. I'm a data guy. We can't go through an entire uh, uh, no. video and just show one tap, chart. Tap and right? Ryan videos does not work like that. Work. Yeah. So uh, to make this all make sense, we went to our engineering teams and said, "Hey guys, we got this idea. We need a ton of data. We're going to look across ten CPUs, nine GPUs, multiple system configurations, fifty games." It all turned out to be, you know, around fifteen thousand test <laughs> cases that people have to run. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So think about it as. Not small. So let's dig into it, right? All right, let's do it. To begin with, uh, we're showing five different CPUs and the performance of those CPUs with an Arc A750 mm -hmm. at 1080p for just DX12. Now we're kind of like dialing it in. Yes. We're, because there's so much data, we can't show all 14,000 test cases. But what this does show is that for DX12, 1080p, A750 has very little CPU sensitivity. Just a couple of games that you would consider like outliers, but the general trend is flat. Yeah, Across and that's top, that's right? what we say where we you know we're at the knee of the curve, right? The at, yeah. at DX12 uh, A750, not a lot uh, 1080p, not a lot of sensitivity. Right? Okay. Okay. Now uh, you'll also note this is a hard chart to look at because there's so many lines. <laughs> so yes. we're going to simplify it in future charts. We're just going to show the, out, the the kind of the bookends. We're yep. going to show the slowest CPU on here and the fastest CPU, a Core i9, and we're going to show you what that looks like across other resolutions and configurations. Exactly. Okay. So the next chart. DX11 is added to this chart. We're doing the bookends, and we're still doing 1080p. And you can tell, looking at this, there's actually this little uh, part on the left where you do see more CPU sensitivity. But even that order of magnitude is relatively small. Right. Right. And again, it says DX11 shows more CPU sensitivity, but not a lot. Right. And that's something that shouldn't surprise anybody that's been following along uh, our, our conversations, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And different APIs, different levels of CPU sensitivity. Yep. It's part of why we, we, we drove for that February release and performance improvement to begin with. Yep. Um, but the, the average across it all, still pretty narrow. Yeah, and, and uh, I do want to share more about what's actually happening in these cases, and I will in a future video, but right now, let's, me, let's just say DX11 is a little bit thicker API. There's a little bit more single-threaded CPU stuff going on there, and as you get to DX12, you tend to see more multi-threaded, a little bit thinner, a little less overhead, yeah. and that's why DX12 tends to be less CPU limited. Yep. Okay. So let's continue on our on our walk here. Now we're doing different resolutions. This is showing 1440p, A750. The trend continues, right? There's little sensitivity. As a matter of fact, 1440p is less sensitive yeah. than 1080p. This is basically the same story. It just narrows the gaps a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more. And, and it makes sense. Everybody knows that as you get higher resolution, you're more GPU limited, and so you tend to be less CPU sensitive. It, it's one of those things that for for decades really is like, hey. When, when you are GPU bound, CPU sensitivity is reduced, but but having that data to really prove it out yeah, has always been very complicated. Good. Okay, so I think this is clear. So now we're gonna start our, 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 our march to a summary, okay? <laughs> okay? The first thing I'm gonna show you is we're gonna average all of those titles, all the resolutions we're adding in DX9, and now, we're looking at uh, 1080p and 1440p across the five CPUs. Yes. Right, and what you can see is it's a flat line, right? It's not the most compelling graphic. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty flat line. But yeah. it does tell you the story, right? Yeah. There's not a lot of CPU sensitivity. So if you're looking for the balanced area, it's somewhere in the middle here of the Core i5 and Core i7. Yep. yep. Right? Now, uh, you know, people say, what's the deal with A750? Why is it? Why? Is this an A750 specific yeah. characteristic? Is it an Intel thing? Yeah. What's going on? That's a good question. Yeah. Well, it turns out that this is not at all an Intel thing. This is a class of GPU thing. Got it. Right. So if you look at CPU sensitivity across multiple GPUs in the same class, in this case, I'm showing A750 and 3060. Mm -hmm. These lines are on top of each other. Again, not a great compelling visual, but um, <laughs> what it's showing you is that the CPU sensitivity is identical. Yes. Okay, and that means that at this class of GPU, you would expect the same result. Right, right. That's good. 
Okay, that's what we want, yeah. right? But the truth is not all workloads are the same, not all GPUs are the same. In this case, if you have a higher performance GPU, you'll see a lot of sensitivity. In this case, I'm showing you a RTX 4090, yeah. and you'll see, hey, wait a second, that curve, the green one, does not at all look now like the, line the looks yes. different, right? Compelling visual, yeah. it's great. So what this tells you is that if you're building a, C a, a system with a 4090, you're gonna wanna get the highest performance CPU you yes. can find, yes. which is not surprising. It's great, right? And because it, it, it shows one of the benefits of, of again being at Intel is we have CPUs that address all these different GPU classes. Yep. Right. So, um, it, and this is also a same type of visual you would see with uh, a non-gaming. CPU bound workload yep. as well, scaling yeah. with CPU cores and frequency Absolutely. as you go up. So now we can come back to our original chart and we yes. can show these bands and hopefully they'll make more sense, right? Uh, starting off on the bottom, A380 scaling well with a Core i3 processor. It doesn't really need a more expensive processor to get the best performance for an A380. Right. If you look at the top, you've got some of these GPUs that are large. They can take advantage of all the headroom provided by a Core i9. So that's why you'll see these unconstrained uh, systems out there. But in the in the sweet spot, in the yeah. in the bulk of the market, the answer for A750 and A770 is Core i5 and Core i7. Yep. Okay. That's what we say here. That's our balance build. And this is, you know, we we. Not, not it, it, we've talked about balance from for for a while. Yes, we right? have. Since we started yeah. talking <laughs> bring, about bring the balance back, yeah. bringing balance back, so it's, it it makes sense that this is still the theme that we want to draw yeah, out, right? So we we've talked very specifically about the GPU, what the right balance is, performance per dollar, all of those narratives that I think make Arc a very compelling. GPU in the space. I'm excited, right? About it. And now we 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 bring in the CPU side of it, right? Mm -hmm. Tons tons of data, uh, even more than we were able to share, right? Yeah. In, a, in a concise manner um, to support the idea of hey, this this is the right combination. Yep. And if you have a different class of GPU, higher or lower, this is the right combination. Yep. And we're going to make it clear to our customers, clear to our channel, and uh, hopefully everybody's uh, living a better life for it. They're, they're going to love it, <laughs> I, and I'm excited because they're excited. And like I said before, with this is a, it's a global program. All, you know, all the different countries that we have retail and SI are going to be telling this story and making sure that it's easy for you to find the right match and combo of components or system. Yep. Uh, to make this the, the the best gaming machine for your dollar. Awesome. So that's it for us for today. Make sure you check out arc.intel.com. We'll have links to all the websites of our retail friends and our system integrator friends that are integrating these machines. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.